In this video, I'm not just going to show you what branded types is and talk about why they're pretty much a necessity for any medium to large scale project, but I'm also going to show you how to hook them up directly inside of Drizzle for easy workflow with your database and how you can set them up in Zod in two different ways to make sure that your entire application is entirely type safe because these branded types allow you to solve type safety problems that you can't solve with any other method. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, my job is to simplify the web for you, and I know we have quite a bit of complicated code going on, so I'm gonna step through exactly what we have to get started so I can show you what the problem is that branded types actually solve. I have some really simple code here that looks fine, but there's actually a huge bug in it. So the very first thing I'm doing is I'm just getting a user based on an ID. You can get this from any method like a cookie or something inside your application, it doesn't matter. We're just getting some user information and you can see that's querying our database to get that information. And if we look at that user object, it has a name, an ID, the latest sale ID, and the latest invoice ID for whatever thing that they purchased most recently. All of this is perfectly fine, we're just getting data from a database. The next thing we're doing is we're just throwing an error if it's null. And then down here, we're calling a function called get order information. And what this does is it takes in the ID for the order and it's going to return to us some details for that order. That seems relatively straightforward. We pass it in the latest sale ID to get all that information. And then we're logging out those order details right here. Everything seems fine when you look at this code on the surface, but there's actually a huge bug. If we dive into this get order information function, you'll notice that this actually queries our invoice table and not our sale table. It expects an invoice ID and not a sale ID. So I'm accidentally passing the wrong thing in. I should be passing an invoice ID in here instead of a sale ID. This is a very common thing that happens in larger scale, especially applications, because you have lots of tables that are very similar. A sale and an invoice are very similar, so it's easy to accidentally pass one ID to something when you really should be passing a different ID. And it doesn't just have to be for IDs. Essentially, anytime you have similar objects or methods or strings or anything like that, passing along information between them, it can become difficult to know if you're passing the right information unless you dive in and look at the actual function. And sometimes even doing that doesn't actually tell you what this property should should be. Obviously renaming this to be like invoice ID would be slightly better, but still it's not type safe because I can just pass in any string and it doesn't matter. I could even come into here and just type in some bogus random string and that's still going to work for the TypeScript purposes. So a branded type is essentially a way for you to tell TypeScript, hey, this doesn't take just any string. Instead, this specifically takes in an invoice ID or a sale ID or a user ID or some other specific type of something. That's what we're trying to accomplish by using branded types. Essentially, what I want to be able to do inside this function, instead of this being a string, I just want to change this to an invoice ID, which is a custom type I create. And that way, the only strings that are actually invoice IDs are able to be passed into this function. And creating these types of branded types is actually quite easy. All we need to do to create this branded type is we can essentially take a type. So we'll just come in here with a test type, which is a string. That's what we know that our normal object type is going to be. So whatever your normal type of your thing is, string, number, some custom object, doesn't matter what it is. Whatever the thing you want to pass in is, use that as your first type and then add an ampersand and combine it together with an object. And this object specifically needs to have a symbol as its thing. You could also just do like underscore underscore brand, something like this. That's going to work fine. We could, for example, just say the brand of this is just going to be invoice ID and we can call this type invoice ID and now essentially what I'm saying is that this invoice ID is a string and it's also going to include an object that has this brand type specifically on it. Now in reality when you actually pass along your invoice ID you're not going to be passing along this brand section to it. This is purely there just for TypeScript and this is why I like to use a symbol in place of this because if we just have this underscore underscore brand thing right here you can see when I type in ID I get access to that underscore underscore brand underscore underscore property. Obviously that's not something that I want. So instead I'm going to be creating a symbol. So inside of TypeScript, I can just say declare const. And what I'm just doing by writing out that code is essentially I'm saying, hey, TypeScript, I have a constant variable. I'm going to call it brand just like this that I don't have declared anywhere yet, but I'm going to declare it somewhere else. And it's a global variable. But in reality, I'm not actually going to create this. This is just here purely for TypeScript. So I'm telling TypeScript, hey, I have this variable called brand that is going to be a unique symbol. So I'm just telling TypeScript, here is a symbol that I'm creating with the name of brand, but I'm not actually creating anything in JavaScript. I'm just telling TypeScript I'm doing that and then not actually doing it, but that's perfectly okay. Then down here, we can use that symbol by just saying underscore underscore brand, just like that. And that allows us to essentially create something that's entirely private. So if I were to come in here and access my ID, I can access that brand. If I just come in here, underscore brand, you can see I access that directly inside of here. But if this symbol is in a different file, for example, I take all this code and I put it inside of a file called 
brand.ts or something along those lines. Here's that exact same code. I'm just going to export that invoice ID, import it into here. You'll now notice when I type on here, underscore brand, nothing pops up. And that's because this symbol is entirely private. If you don't have access to this variable, you can't have access to it. So it doesn't mess with your IntelliSense or anything like that. Essentially, all I've done by creating this invoice ID like this is I've told TypeScript, hey, I have a string. And the string specifically has this weird symbol thing attached to it called invoice ID. And that's what allows TypeScript to determine, okay, this invoice ID is unique because it has this extra thing added onto it. Now, in reality, I'm not actually adding that on inside of JavaScript. This is purely inside of TypeScript only. And I'm just going to fake it and tell TypeScript, hey, I do have this thing actually added on, even though in reality, I don't. And that's okay because there's no way to possibly access this. This entire section right here is just for telling TypeScript, hey, this thing is a specific type of something and not just a normal generic string. Now we'll come back a little bit more into how this works, but I wanna show you what this actually does for us because that's really the more important part than understanding exactly how this works. So let's come into here. We're just gonna save everything inside this file. And if we go back to our index.ts, you notice immediately we're getting an error. If we hover over this, essentially it's telling us that a normal string is not assignable to this invoice ID because this invoice ID has this extra brand section appended onto it that we don't have inside of our object. Now there's a few different ways we, we can solve this problem. The easiest if we're using Drizzle, for example, is inside of Drizzle, wherever we have our code for a sale ID and invoice ID, we have this dot type property, and this allows us to override what the actual type returned is. Now I know this is going to return a string, but essentially I want to trick it into thinking it is this custom invoice ID that I created. So I want to just tell my database, hey, instead of returning a string, return to me an invoice ID. And if we just make sure, that I actually put this inside the angle brackets, there we go, and then call this function like that. I'm essentially telling Drizzle, hey, this invoice ID is not a string, instead it's of this type invoice ID. Now, if I go back to here, I still get an error when I try to use my sale ID, because the sale ID is a string, but if I pass it in my latest invoice ID, this actually has that custom type that we created for an invoice ID. So you can see by doing this, I've essentially created an extra layer of type safety. I've said, hey, this get order information doesn't just take any string. It takes specifically an invoice ID. And if I don't pass it an invoice ID, it's going to throw an error, which helps with these types of bugs where you can accidentally pass the wrong ID or the wrong property to a function. It just makes it more clear what is going on and it forces you to be explicit that you're passing along invoice ID, sales ID, or whatever other type of ID you're working with. And since in our brand, this is essentially just combining together everything that's in a string plus this additional thing, this invoice ID still works exactly the same as a normal string. The only difference is, is that it just has this extra property added on purely in the types only. This is not impacting your real JavaScript. It's just an extra thing added on in your types to help TypeScript discriminate what type of string you're trying to use in this particular case. We could create another one if we wanted to have, for example, a sale ID, and we can call this one sale ID as the brand type here. And now inside of Drizzle, I can do the exact same thing. So we'll just come in here and I'll say that this one is going to be our sale ID, just like that. And now my latest sale ID has this custom type applied to it as well. And you can do this for all the different things inside your application that have these unique identifiers that you need to worry about using. And the nice thing is if you do this at the database level, or if you don't have it accessible at your database, you do it at like a data access layer, which if you're not familiar with data access, I'll link a whole video in the cards and description for you. But if you do it at this really low level layer, you don't have to worry about constantly casting things throughout your entire application. Because when you get that data from your database or your data access layer, it already has the proper types assigned to it. And then when you use it throughout your different functions and inside your application, you'll just be able to use it like normal and you'll be able to say, okay, you know, this takes invoice IDs, this takes sales IDs and so on. Now to make this a little bit more of an advanced thing, I'd want to go over to our brand and we'll create a custom type here called brand that's going to encompass everything that we need for this. So this brand type is going to be a double generic. The first type inside of here is just going to be what we want to extend. So in our case, string or number or whatever. And the second type here is essentially going to be this string right here. So we're going to say B is just going to extend a string and that's going to be the name of the brand. And we can say that we're just taking our normal type T, which we know is like a string or something like that. And we're adding on this entire brand section but instead of having a hard-coded string right here, we're gonna use whatever that generic type B is. So now, instead of all of this code right here, I can just change this to brand, where the brand is a string, and we'll say invoice ID, there we go. So now I have this invoice ID type. I can do the exact same thing for our sale ID by just changing this text right here to sale ID. And if I wanted to do something for like a number, for example, we could have like a number ID here, I could change this to be a number instead, and now it's extending a number. And you can even do this with objects, for example. I can have an object that has like, you know, some property on it with some specific value, 
And now, instead of just allowing me to pass along any object with this particular set of values, it's going to force it to be one that already has this brand applied to it. So we can extend anything, not just strings or numbers, literally anything that you want. And I know when you're looking at this, you may think this is really convoluted and a lot of extra work because now I need to create these additional types. I need to add them to my database or my data access layer. I then need to add them to all my functions. Why would I do this? And if you're working on a small project, it doesn't make sense to do this. But as soon as you get to a larger scale, especially like an enterprise scale project, this is something that you definitely want to include because as your database and your objects and your domain grows and grows and grows, there's going to be tons of things like invoices, sales, orders that overlap with each other so much, it's difficult to know which one is required in each instance. So passing along these different branded types for IDs, strings, and anything else is really, really crucial. Now, I also want to show you how you can hook this up with Zod because it's somewhat different, but also similar. So what we can do inside of Zod is we can create a schema. So we can just say we're going to have a Zod object and the Zod object is going to have an ID. And normally you could just say like Z.string such as that. And that's going to create you a schema that uses this ID as a string perfectly fine. But what if we want to brand this as a specific type? For example, we want this to be an invoice ID. And by default right now, it's just a string. Well, the nice thing is we can use this brand property inside of Zod. So inside of Zod, I could say I want to brand this as an invoice ID. And what this is going to do is essentially it's going to create its very own version of a branded type specifically related just to Zod. And it's going to give me this invoice ID type. So let's just come in here. We'll just say schema just so we can see what this looks like in the types. And then I want to do a quick little parse. And we're just going to parse an object that has an ID, which is going to be a string just like that. And then we're going to get our results back. Now, if we look at our actual result object here, you'll notice we get that exact same kind of syntax we had before. We have a string and presented with this z.core brand invoice ID. This is Zod's own version of a branded ID. So if you don't have your own set of branded IDs throughout your application, for example, you don't have this file with all your own brands, you can use Zod specifically for this and their own version of branding. But this way of branding things doesn't work with our current system. For example, if I were to take whatever this is, and pass this into get order information, res.id, you're gonna see I get an error. They are different types. This one is a Zod brand, and this one is my own custom brand. So these don't play together properly. If you want to be able to use Zod while also using your own branded library, instead of using a brand here, we could just do a transform. And this transform is quite simple. All we do is we just take our type, return it exactly the same as before. We just tell TypeScript, hey, this has a type of invoice ID instead. Now that will fix the problem. Of course, I called this the wrong thing down here, but you can see that error is fixed. And if I go back to that brand way of doing things with invoice, ID, you notice we're still getting an error again because they have different properties between what is actually assigned for them. Another kind of advanced use case when it comes to this is what happens if you just have a string on its own? You don't have Zod or anything else to validate it. I just have a string which is equal to some string and I want to check, hey, is this string an invoice ID or I want to specifically say this is an invoice ID. Well, then you need to essentially use type guards and stuff inside a TypeScript. So I can create a simple function. And let's just say that I call this as invoice ID, which is a function that takes in our string, which we'll just call val just like that, which is a string. And I want to convert this essentially to that specific type. I can just say here, I want to return my val as an invoice ID. And this is an easy way to do that automatic casting for me. So now what I can do down here is I can say as invoice ID, pass it along that string. And that way I can essentially convert any string I want to that invoice ID type. Of course, I have to manually cast this because all this stuff is purely happening behind the scenes in TypeScript. But for the most part, again, if you're using a database or data access layer, all of this casting is automatically happening for you at the lowest level. And then when you use this code everywhere else, it automatically already has that invoice ID type. But for some reason, if you're like not using Zod for validation, or maybe your database or data access layer isn't set up, this is a way you can get around those potential problems. And you don't have to use this just with IDs or things like that. You can use it, for example, with a number. Imagine I have a function here, which is called sleep. And this function just waits for a specified period of time, which is some type of number. And you know, we would have a set timeout in here that does whatever and waits for that duration just like that and whatever. It doesn't matter what the function itself does, but we have that sleep function that waits for a specified duration. Well, this duration we know is in milliseconds if you're used to set timeout. But what happens if this duration is actually in seconds or minutes or hours? I don't know just by calling this sleep method what that duration is in. It's just some random duration. So instead, I could give this a specific type, for example, seconds. There we go. And then inside my branded section, I can export a type called seconds, just like that, which is a brand that is a number. 
and the name is whatever, it doesn't matter. There we go, we called it seconds. So now inside of here, I can import seconds just like this. And now whenever I pass something to this, let's say I pass a duration of two, I know that this is going to be as seconds. Again, it's going to give me an error because I need to make sure I cast it. So I could say that is a seconds type specifically, but now you can see here that I'm being explicit. It's easy to see, hey, this takes in seconds as the duration instead of milliseconds or hours or minutes. Now, obviously I would need to multiply this by a thousand to make it truly work with seconds. But as you can see, this is a really clear way for me to do this. And again, this as casting is not ideal. It's better to create like a function or something for this, or maybe you have some type of whole duration library that makes sure it returns these types for you. But these branded types can be used for tons of different things, numbers, objects, IDs, it doesn't matter. I find the by far the most common use is something like an ID for different getters and things like that. But again, you can use them all over your application and they're really crucial, especially as your application starts to get larger and larger and your database models grow in complexity and similarity. Now, if you enjoyed this deep dive into advanced TypeScript features, I'm gonna link a couple other videos right over here covering other advanced TypeScript features. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.